Let us pray. We begin our prayers this morning with a prayer of confession for our sins and with four short sentences to God and then a period of quiet. And this prayer is about the word but, B-U-T. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, you have given us a world of beauty, but we spoil it. A, word, a world to feed all, but so many go hungry. A world of richness, but we are unwilling to share. A world to care for, but we only think of ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, for those times that your heart is saddened by our selfishness. For those times when we have no thought for others, no cares but our own. Enable us to see this world anew as a gift from you to be shared and nurtured. And those who live in it to be loved and cared for. We ask now that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of our lives. Amen. And now to turn to our prayers of thanksgiving and adoration. And the prayer that came to my mind in the night was the hymn, Nundankut Alagot. So I'm reading a hymn. And in my mind, I will be hearing a great choir singing this, and you may well too. Let us pray. Now thank we all, our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom his earth rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God, through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us. And keep us in his grace, and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all ills, in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore. For thus it was, is now, and shall be, evermore. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The reading today is Isaiah 55, 10 to 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, but making it bud and flourish, 
so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the era. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow a pine tree and instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. Amen. The next hymn is 136, The Morning Has Broken. The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into the boat and sat in it, while all the other people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and, uh, and once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but that worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the words and understands it. He produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times more than what was sown. Amen. losing my signal so we should find out where we get with this that 
the story of Matthew appears to be amazingly simple, something we all know really well. But you have to listen carefully and consider what it is that Jesus is saying. Jesus was not preaching. He was telling stories. And we all know how much more interesting stories are than a sermon. Jesus went out a little way from the shore so that people could hear him because sound travels better over water. He told the story of the sower who sowed his seed on the ground and in those days sowers would walk up and down putting their hand in a sack and throwing it out across the ground. And as a result, the seed was broadcast all over the ground. And some of the seed fell on places that were not as good as others. The story is not only about the kind of seed, but how it grew, but what each person made by God is like, dependent on where they grow. So we have our story. This is the story of Jesus. A sower went out to sow. Some seed fell on the path. And this is what the path said. I am a path, easily walked over. People do it all the time. I have no identity of my own. And should anything fall on me, others will pick it up, like birds scrabbling for crumbs, and I am left bare and fruitless. I am the one that people walk over. This is the story of Jesus. A sower went out to sow. Some seeds fell on the rocks. And this is what the rock said. I am a rock garden, attractive but shallow. People admire me all the time. They say how good I look. And I like looking good. They say what novel ideas I have. And I like having novel ideas. The trouble is, they are always novel always new, here today, gone tomorrow. No root, no depth, but admirable in a shallow way. This is the story of Jesus. The sower went out to sow. Some seed fell on wasteland. And this is what the wasteland said. I am the laced wasteland on which weeds thrive. I'm filled with isms, commercialism, materialism, consumerism, industrialism, capitalism, communism. I am full of theory and barren of life choking to death everything real. I am the wasteland, full of isms and none of them working. This is the story of Jesus. The sower went out to sow. Some of the seed fell on the good soil. We are all the fertile soil to whom God gives much and from whom he expects much. On the good soil the seed fell and produced plants, and the plants ripened and produced grain, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. And Jesus said, If you have ears to hear, then hear. We're going to watch a clip, a YouTube special.
of what it looks like to see a seed grow. Have you ever thought about what it looks like when a plant seed grows in the garden? That's given me a whole new insight into how the weeds grow in my garden, greater than faster than the flowers. Jesus said at the end of his story, if you have ears to hear, then listen or hear. Have you ever thought that since we have two ears and one mouth, we should listen twice as much as we speak? Unfortunately, we often do the contrary. Today, we might argue that listening and hearing come a poor second to sight and seeing. The rapid development of visual technology suggests that where the priorities lie tend to be on the vision. Equally, equally we are told that seeing is believing. But you can't always believe everything you hear these days. Jesus' story is about growing things, planting seeds in the large or small numbers and seeing what happens. If we buy a packet of seeds and it contains hundreds of seeds and we dig them into the ground and prepare it with fertilizer and water it and watch over them and we hope they grow. They grow not according to the conditions in which they fell. Better soil, poorer soil, depth of soil, water, sunlight. This is the substance of Jesus' story. If you have ears, listen. 
God is a benevolent God and he wants everyone to profit from his largesse so that the world may be disseminated, word may be disseminated everywhere, even in those places where there is every chance it will not produce the desired effect of the four examples in the story. Only one was fruitful. From a human perspective, this is wasteful. Just imagine if a football manager was sacked because he only won one game in four, regardless of how well the team performed in the winning matches. God sees the potential for growth in everyone. Like the fishermen who cast their nets far and wide, the seed of the word is to be scattered everywhere. The parables suggest that growth is a natural situation for Christians, whether we see this account on a personal basis or associate it with our efforts to share the good news. If Christians are not growing, there is something wrong in their lives that may be connected to the soil related scenarios in the, par in the parable. Do we have a hardness of heart? Is there shallowness in what we do and say? Or are we being too consumed by everyday personal concerns that we are failing to tell the story? How can we ensure that we will be fruitful? In John chapter 15, Jesus uses another farming analogy about the vines and the branches. And he tells us to abide or live in him to assure good growth. We need to work out what effectively connects us to Jesus. Rejoice in the good harvest and never take it for granted. We must pull up the weeds and destroy them and plant in good soil that we have taken time to prepare. <coughs> Jesus has planted seeds in each one of us. We are his possibility of a fertile soil. But are we allowing his seeds to die through our neglect, lack of understanding or care? Can we care and cherish the seeds that God has put in us so that our understanding and knowledge of Jesus grows and our ability to pass on the seeds of his love to others are then possible through all that he calls us to do? Amen. We are going to sing, I am a new creation, 553. <laughs> Thank you. 
come together to pray for the world and for us. Let us pray. Loving God, who made the world and everything in it, we pray with one voice, proclaiming your presence in all the earth. We pray for the governments of the world to come together to put away differences and work to unite the world, to care for the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the disenfranchised, the sick, lonely and the unloved. We pray for our world as we come together to fight this pandemic that is taking lives in such a terrible way. We pray for those who survive, who are changed mentally and physically, for the hundreds of thousands who have lost loved ones. May they know God's healing power, love and peace. And we will remember all those who have given their lives in service, their time and the talents to help. We think of those who have served the wider community during this time, postmen and women, refuge collectors, food banks, and so many others. We remember those who have lost their income, their jobs, and the businesses that have closed. During this time, Lord, things have changed. Help us, Lord, to change too. As the world has changed, our thinking should change. Priorities should change. For we are living in a world that is sick and an atmosphere that needs to be changed. Give us the energy and the strength to move on to think in a different way. We pray for our world, which is ever changing. For what was hidden away is brought into the light. Help us to understand what is different, to understand that. Give us new insight. Help us to see you in all these differences. We remember and pray for Christian brothers and sisters who are persecuted, imprisoned and killed for living out their faith. We pray for all who see love as an alternative way and a goal for people. We pray for those we know, those who have died, for those who are dying, for those who live with sickness and pain, for the depressed and the anxious. And in a moment of quiet, we bring them to you. Each week, each day, we pray for change, but the wheels move ever so slowly. But change does come. 
So into your hands we place these prayers, knowing you're listening and changing things day by day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to sing now 671. What shall we offer our good Lord? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. We're going to sing because this is quite fun and I hope you're going to enjoy it. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And then reading we had from Isaiah. I'm going to do it three times, getting faster all the way through, <laughs> according to Margaret, the other one. 